Welcome to Interceptor Beyond Podcast. My name is Arthur, and this is episode number 12. Today we have the band called Groundlift. They are from Boston, Massachusetts, of the US of A. Really good musicians and really good and pleasant people. Recorded online. So we talked about them get working together with their producer Steve Abbotts, getting signed to the Oracle management, band rebranding, well, sort of social media fame, and you're going to hear my reaction to the new song and the video. Keep in mind that I edited all the pauses during that reaction, so the song is actually a bit longer. Don't forget to subscribe, follow, hit that like button, and of course tell your friends. Share on social media. It's so easy. You can also help out and subscribe on Patreon. You'll get an early access to the episodes, updates on the current episodes, and shoutouts on the future episodes. All right, let's talk to Groundlift. I'm Leah. Hello. I'm Mike. I'm the <laughs> bass player. Hello. And I'm Ace, the singer and guitarist. That's where I'm at. <laughs> we need to say that you're right now in Boston. I'm in Austria, and it's like six uh, hours of difference, and you're like still a little bit sleepy, and I am about to go <laughs> out later, so I'm more hyped than you are. So it's, it's there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> still the, coffee. It's, it's important for people to understand <laughs> the context. Well, anyways, so um, I came to know your band uh, uh, one year ago. We talked one year ago, and I was doing research on Oracle management to see who they're following, who, who who's the next big thing. And I came across your band. I was like, okay, I will check you out. And then I sent you a message, and then you responded, and then we had a little talk. And then I back then one year ago I said, well, "Would you like to be on my podcast?" You know, like I talked to Leah. I, th I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, "Yeah, sure." And on one year later, here we are. You know, <laughs> sorry, it took so long. No, 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 no. It's planned. It's all planned. It's part of the big plan. Lined so up. I I need to ask you what what. So in the beginning, when we first talked, you just got signed to the management to Oracle Management, right? And uh, that's it, yeah. fresh, you know, and now one year later. So what, what changed? I think a lot of things changed. Yeah, yeah, De <laughs> definitely a lot of things changed. Ace, you want to you want to say? Yeah, I mean, we've been since uh, last year when we signed with Oracle, we recorded this whole new EP uh, with Steve Evans, this producer out of L.A. And um, yeah, we, we've started playing a lot of shows this year, too, which we haven't since the pandemic. So, and we've just been trying to grow our, you know, online social media following, too, in the past, like, you know, year or six months. And it's been, uh, it's been going really well. So a lot's been going on this year. Yeah, some, some of the shows we played were, um, we, we played at the Whiskey A Go-Go um, with a few like Los Angeles bands. So that was our first show on the West coast. And, um, our manager Des hooked that up for us, which was really great. And, um, we also opened up for, uh, Richie Kotzen. Um, he plays in the winery dogs with, uh, like Mike Portnoy and Billy Sheehan. So we got to open up for him and that was really awesome. Um, that was, that was probably our first show opening up for like a real, like a, yeah. an actual artist that we've been like fans of for a long time. You know what I mean? So that was, that was really special. Yeah, it was really yeah. And then uh, we, we also recorded a music video with uh, Vicente Cordero. I don't know if you know him, but he does all of like Haken's videos. He, he also does. Richie does yeah, he does Richie's videos, too. It seems like everybody we, we meet knows Richie. It's really weird. Um, like they know him personally. But yeah, um, yeah no. So we, we've done a lot of stuff. It's been cool. It's been good. Yeah, it's been a, uh, you've done a lot of stuff. And especially. Yeah, I, I, I know. Like you played at Whiskey and Go Go. You know, like let's. OK. We're going to talk about all of this a little bit in more detail. So uh, we need to go a little bit back to introduce you to the local community. I will just go quickly. So you, yeah. Ace and Mike, met at high school. I mean, you were in high school, got to know each other, needed a drama, found Leah at Berkeley University of College, played together then since 2016. And around... Uh, Aug no, uh, June, you got signed to Oracle Management, something like this, you know. And you released around like five singles, so, uh, like from 2016 till 2021. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we released actually a lot more than that. Um, like uh, for, for a while, we had like a whole like record out and then like more singles. But then as the years went by and then we became like better at, at 
our instruments and stuff. Yeah. We were well, like, and also we were we were recording those ourselves, like in the basement, and we like <laughs> we didn't know what we were doing there either. So we were like, okay, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, but the, but the first, like for example, on Spotify, right? Yeah, uh, like the first singles is it's is it your first singles or it's the one that you left kept and the first singles you removed? Uh, yeah, we removed the first one. Like the uh -huh. the first part, yeah. These because are newer what ones. I want to say is, like, right from the beginning, you already sound really cool. You know, like the well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, you're getting better and better each time. You know, but right at the beginning, I mean, I guess you done the right thing. You removed all the stuff that you were not satisfied with, mm -hmm. and you got the best stuff out. So I don't know. Like, right from the beginning, it sounds cool, and now it's getting better and better. So yeah, thank you. And uh, okay, so. Not all stuff is there, uh, and I think uh, that's where I heard your music. Right, there were like a couple of singles. There were like uh... yeah, now it's just singles up there. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, let's talk. All right. So how did you get discovered by Oracle Management? Is it personal connections, or you sent some uh, some songs to them? Oh yeah, we just we sent them like a music video we made for our single "Till You Run Out of Time" that we have out now. And they really liked it, so that was kind of all we did, you know. So, so you know, like we need to because I'm asking you already, like a band that already made to the next level, you know, got signed, you know, recording with with producer, went to LA. So I'm asking these questions from point of view of like, oh, how did you get it from the point of view of musicians who are still on the level? Yeah. Oh, of course. So, like, okay, you sent just a music video, or you sent music video, a link by email, and some information about you? Yeah, kind of. It was in an email, yeah, with, like, a link to the video. And we just kind of explained, you know, what we're about and sent them the video. And, yeah, then they responded. Because what we used to do is, like, we would... We would we would sit down. This was before we like knew. We, we we realized we need connections. We need to know people, right? We need to like get our name out there. So the three of us would sometimes just sit down together and just send out all of our stuff to as many people as we could. Literally, kind of like cold calling and just trying to sell. Uh, and then Oracle, yeah, Oracle liked us. So yeah, so you just did some googling, right? Like like where you've tried all over the place, right? Not only in your area, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, because Oracle's and, based in California. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're based in California. And uh, when did they respond? Was it fast? Like within Instant. 10 minutes. It was crazy. We yeah. were like, oh, I'm Jay. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, right. Instant. <laughs> well, well, that's cool. Uh, were you excited? Yeah. I, I guess you were freaking out a bit. Yeah. I was. Yeah, we were. Yeah. <laughs> really excited. And um, all right. And what what did they say? So I guess you talked to Des, right? Mm -hmm. Did what, what? What's the next step? Okay, they got an email. What? What they was was it a response? You know, like oh, it's cool stuff. Let's let's talk. Do you have time now? <laughs> <laughs> well, he he like yeah. Basically, he emailed. He was like, I love this video. This is sick. Like, I want to talk to you guys like tomorrow morning. So we just you know emailed with him a little bit, and then we called him the next day, and he was like, Yeah, like we should work with you. You know, so and you're like yeah. fine. Great. Yeah, we're like, okay, sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. And and, and then I, and then and when was it? Like in around June, if you remember. I think it was. Like May, I think. Yeah, it was like May of last year. I think. Yeah. May, yeah, June. because when I when I was talking to you, you were like, we're still fresh from this experience. You know, you I, I were asking you questions. So, all right, I mean, you're signed. All right, cool. Do you know what you're gonna do? No idea. <laughs> right. We didn't have a lot to say on your podcast a year ago. That's that's true, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, my idea was like uh, later, like in half a year to to call you, but no, it's better one year. I mean, and everything. Never mind. Yeah. So, all right. So, they got signed. So, what happens next after that? After that moment of understanding that you are with the uh, music management company? Um, he really helped us like develop our like look. First, I feel like that's the first. Our brand, did. yeah, our brand, because we we would just go out on stage like, like we, he told us we were we were kind of collegey, which we didn't realize. But you were clean, we, you were clean and yeah. nice kids <laughs> from the <laughs> from the yeah, neighborhood. Yeah, we, like, we looked like looked like we were like in college, which made sense because we were, you know, we just finished college. But yeah, we like we wouldn't um like we would just wear our normal clothes on stage and stuff, and like 
you know, we would we didn't really think too much about that stuff, but he was like, No, you need to look really cool. You need to walk into a room and people be like, Wow. Yeah. Hello. I like, that. <laughs> these people yeah. are these people are cool. So so yeah, we all we all like got a new wardrobe. <laughs> yeah, we all got new stage outfits. And so if you look at pictures of us from like before 2020 and then after 2020, like it, it's like there's like a different look there. Yeah. Yeah. And he hooked us up with a, a Jeremy Safer. He's a photographer. <clears throat> um, so we got us some like cool edgy photos with him. Yeah. Um, cause he's like, he's like the guy. The, the and he's like really he's famous. For, uh, he is really famous. Uh, music photographer he does a lot of uh, photographs of 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 many famous rock bands and metal bands yeah yeah like every single every single yeah one. i've seen him do like <laughs> alice cooper dave mustaine other people like that mm -hmm. and then he also did us this little <laughs> band from we were like okay cool well, <laughs> we would love to <laughs> yeah that was the first thing Des did he kind of right like he helped us with the yeah we had to rebrand the socials too and like you know get a good look online going yeah, but then also the music he helped us with we, that of too. Of course, yeah, and we we also we're like we're very, like our 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 sound is very like scattered all over the place. We're like he helped us kind of. Well, he hooked us up with Steve Evans, who helped us, um, like really hone in our our sound because we were kind of all over. Well, there's like a reason for that. Like <laughs> you know, when we first got hooked up with Des, he you know while he was helping us develop our brand, right, like the look and the social media stuff and the the logo, all that kind of thing. Um, he was also submitting our songs or submitting. I mean, he was just showing our songs to various people he knew in the industry. And a lot of people were like, this is really, really cool, but it's kind of all over the place. Like if you listen to some of our older stuff, that's why we took a lot of it down. I mean, we're going to re-release it one day, re-record some of it, but, um, it was kind of all over the place. Like some, some of the tracks sounded like a metal band. Some of it sounded like a pop punk band. And some of it sounded like a band trying to be like progressive and, uh, Des, and then the producer we worked with now, Steve, he helped, they helped us really be focused with that and combine that um yeah we still do some crazy stuff but like yeah it's not as like whoa what is going well on? i mean we we i don't know just a lot of the people that he was showing our stuff to they were saying it's great but it's scattered like it needs to be more focused so we we were able to get more focused without compromising our like original sound of what we wanted it to do you know initially i was skeptical about changing the way we thought about our music but i mean after it just made more sense now our music's better because of it you know what i mean and so far there's no new music at the moment that you recorded with steve at the at this point no there is there is yeah there yes. is. but it's, there is wait but it's not till you run off time it's different when it's yeah it hasn't been released at all we, we but we have it but we have it but it's online no 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 release ah. no hard drives <laughs> You're talking about my professional review abilities of research of finding the stuff about you. You know, no, if I couldn't you find it, everything. it means it shouldn't be there, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't worry. You didn't miss yeah. it. You did not miss yeah. it. But wait a second. It's like, uh, uh, were you at LA? So you did at least one trip to LA to record the music video, record the music, do the photo shoot. Was it only once? No, probably. Or two times. <laughs> Yeah, we went twice. Yeah. once back in the end of last year to record the actual uh, EP. And then we went back to do a show at the Whiskey and to do the music video and some other stuff, the live video at Sawtooth. All right. So, okay. So was it your first time uh, last year at the, uh, at LA, in LA? It was in like Orange County. We were in, we recorded, it's like... Basically LA. Yeah, but I mean, it's like... Yeah, that was our first time like doing anything as a band out there, pretty much. So, um, why well, why I'm asking is like because for uh, Europeans, I mean, okay, uh, I will just say for myself, you know, like okay, LA, the show business, yeah. <laughs> the music, the film industry, and everything that glitters can be really scary. How was it for you? Uh, it was. It was fine. I mean, Steve was so great. Like, I feel like we bonded with him immediately and he made us very comfortable so like it was it's just a very like creative and like good process instead of it being like i don't know scary or whatever I, I don't know what you guys think but he speaks our musical language like we'd be we'd be in the studio with him like working on one of the tunes and he'd be like yeah like try like he would he would he would just reference like some obscure song from like cheap trick or something be like you know that phil from that song and we'd all be like yes we do and he'd be like oh my god you actually know it and it was just a bunch of things like that you know what i mean yeah yeah so we vibed with him very very well 
Yeah, it's really important. And I could see it on the photos because you posted a lot of photos on social media. So I could see that everything, the atmosphere is really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was awesome. Yeah, so how, so uh, you recorded an album or an EP? Six song EP. Uh -huh. Six song EP. Okay, I can see. Uh, and then uh, uh, you recorded the music. We'll talk a lot of, okay, let's talk about the music again. So, uh, all right, you said it's more, uh, um, you it goes in one direction, like musically. So how different is well, it? Mostly. Uh, how, how, how different is it from the stuff that's online at the moment? For example, Till You Run Out of Time, like how different is it? It's actually the most like Till You Run Out of Time. Like, like it's, it's, cause Till You Run Out of Time, it has a lot of different things going on with it, right? But um, I remember Dez said like, yeah, that song, Till You Run Out of Time, that is what your guys' focus should be at the moment. Like that type of song and that kind of vibe, that's what you guys should do. Um, which was easy for us. I mean, you know, it's our song. So, uh, for example, if I compare like the first song that you have on uh, on Spotify, for example, like Gorilla Master or something, this it's more like rocky, like rock rock. Yeah. And this one has elements of funk, ki kind of. Yeah. I mean, I might be wrong, you know, like I'm not a musician, but I'm trying to. Have you are right. You're totally right. Yeah. There's, there's elements of funk on the EP. Yeah, on the new stuff, there's definitely some funky stuff, like chili peppery. Yeah. And I, I agree with Des. This is the stuff that you're like, would like. this is like <laughs> fresh stuff, you know? Like, this is your thing, you know? Trendy. Yeah. Especially, like, all of you are, like, really good musicians, technically and in general, as an artist. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So I think, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's totally right. <laughs> you should push him in that direction. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, like, more funky. What, what else is there? Is it like the whole EP is like that or just like a couple of songs? Yeah, it's not uh, It's not all like funky or anything like that, but it, there's just like some groovy stuff, like a couple of funky sections, but it's like, in general, it's just like, it sounds amazing because Steve did a great job and it's like really, all the songs are like a lot better like organized and like, you know, produced than um, we'd previously been doing, like as far as the song structure and... Um, and each of our individual parts kind of like fitting together. It's like very well thought out, I think, and like on another level than anything else we've done before. What was his part like regarding your direction? It's like... Um, Whose part? Uh, Steve's. Steve's. Yes, Steve's. You know, like uh, sometimes, you know, like if you compare, well, if you check online and you Google music producer and you... Uh, see Rick Rubin and Rick Rubin is like on the couch doing nothing, you know, like this meme, you know, like everything's <laughs> yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. It's like the best. But sometimes when I talk to other musicians, they said, you know, he didn't do anything. He didn't mess up the song. That was exactly the right move, you know. So what was like with Steve, you know, how how was it? We, we already talked that he knew how to talk to you, but what did he say? Like, how did he direct you musically? Um, well, we were... we. Like to before we worked with him, we recorded like, like how many demos? Like fifteen? Uh, yeah, no, more than that. We we like, we before we worked with him, yeah, we recorded like over twenty demos of songs. We just because we have a lot of songs, like just the three of us know about, you know, like a ton of them. All right, and uh, we're gonna record them eventually. So yeah. we we recorded like every song that we could possibly think of that we that we have written over the years, and we sent them all to him. Yeah, he and then he, all of them he and picked his six favorites. Yeah. Ooh. You know? Yeah, so we did that. Well, well, you're you're one of the bands who can actually produce so many songs. Not many bands. Like I talked to the bands, they're like, "Oh, we need we need in an we're recording a new album, but we need a lot of songs. We need ten songs, but we don't have any songs. But we need well, that's album. Ace. Ace is just very. He just is constantly like spitting songs out. It's really weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like we have like more songs than we need or whatever. Like yeah, we have to whittle. Recorded. We have to whittle them down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, just just like Prince, put them in the, in 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 a vault somewhere, always yeah. for the later, the for the future. Oh yeah, <laughs> there's a vault. There's a They're vault. In the vault. But yeah, I mean, it, it's not like in doing this, we like totally changed our sound. Like it's it's very similar to to what it was before. If you listen to our songs on Spotify, it's similar. It's just more focused. That's the best way I feel like we can describe it. It's just it's not as all over the place, but it, I think it's more effective that way. You know. Are you going to make some, uh, gonna write some, uh, like description? It's a conceptual album. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Concept album. Concept album. Yeah. It's also, though, like within the EP, it is more focused, but there's still like a lot of different kinds of influences coming in, I think. Like, and it's not all one thing or like one concept. Like, it's, 
this each song is like still very different from the other i think which i enjoy yeah. about it but there's like a vibe to the whole thing yeah like it's, there's a it's sound like the first, it's like the first foo fighters album like you listen to it like yeah you know some of the songs are what you have like big me and then you have like this is a call then you have i'll stick around then you have like a weenie beanie or whatever like it's a lot of different stuff but all the same vibe you know yeah all right so this is like going to be your first uh ep uh, I mean, it's not your first EP in general, but it's like a first EP in this new, new, new direction. How to call it? I don't know. Yeah. All right. Um, do you already know when it's coming out? No, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> or you're uh, lying. We don't have a release date. <laughs> or you know. No, we're not. Lying. Um, I guess Daz. Tell. I mean, everything is in plan of Daz. He knows already when it's coming out, but uh, maybe he doesn't want to freak you out. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, it's, no. it's kind of like, uh, it, it kind of depends on a couple of things, right? Um, it depends on, you know, if we can get label support to release the EP, then we would want to do that. But then if, if, you know, we, uh, labels end up not being that interested right now, just because of what we have going on, then we'll probably self-release it. It kind of depends, you know? Yeah. So he's like trying to shop it around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why you're so quiet because they're going like, uh, uh you're not talking. You're not telling me a lot about it because at the moment, Jazz is working his magic with the labels uh, and with your new EP, and says like, "This is how they look like. There's their sound. They're gonna be amazing. They're gonna sell arenas." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but you you asked Arthur about uh, like what was Steve's role in the the writing of the songs, right? And th this is probably an interesting thing for you know the the musicians that listen to this podcast. Like, what we would do is we would all get in the studio together. I mean, we were in the studio for like 10, 12 hours a day when we were there for like two weeks straight. It was just... Whoa, that's that's a long time, two weeks. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot. Mm -hmm. But um, we would, the four of us would just get in a room and, you know, with, with our guitar, bass, drums, and then Steve would stand in the middle of us and we would play the songs and Steve would just stand in the middle and kind of listen and write notes down. And then he would start reorganizing and we would all just start bouncing ideas off together like he'd be like why don't we try this or why don't we add this or take this away or make this longer you know all that kind of thing he became like a fourth band member whoa like in beatles with the with the with the, the, yes. the, the. exactly <laughs> exactly wow okay i've never heard about that well it was very very cool it was great yeah oh well okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he likes it uh, it's the next level that i don't know what to ask about <laughs> <laughs> So uh, did anything like a completely surprised you like that ca came out of it that you didn't even expect maybe musical or anything, you know, I mean, the whole experience is uh, like magical, I guess. I mean, there are definitely some like pleasant surprises, but like nothing, you know, that we wouldn't have wanted in the songs, but like we, I think he encouraged us to like write like better parts for songs, like when they needed it too, which I think was a, was a cool surprise like that we weren't expecting like, there's some songs that have like these great parts now that like we we that were not previously in the song because he like he was like this like what could we do different with this bridge or whatever or like mm, yeah. this interlude here like can, can what can we think of and it ended up being fantastic so that was a that was kind of a surprise but in a good way was uh, um did you all did he also influence the lyrics or it was just music occasionally the lyrics like if he was like do you really want to say motherfucker like in this verse like <laughs> you guys are too nice for that like i remember that I remember oh that. like <laughs> actually it was what one of my my uh first impressions like oh these are nice guys you know like yeah <laughs> when i checked you out I mean, first time and on the instagram it's like they're so nice they're like studied in kali and music industry like this you know like yes <laughs> yeah it's not like axel rose in 1986 <laughs> like it's a different time now right right we're not, we're not that yeah yeah but yeah, mostly he left the lyrics like pretty pretty untouched, like except if if we're like really wanted his advice or something. But it was more so like the arranging and the the music, I think. Yeah, he he's a great uh, instrumentalist too. He's a bass player, so he he helped us like develop our parts. Like you know, we would come in with a drum part or whatever that was like pretty much done, and he would just take it to the next level. Same with the guitar parts, same with the bass parts. He added a little bit of keyboard too, I think, right? And like yes. a few spots, yeah. A small amount, and yeah. percussion. He's amazing at percussion, like yeah. tambourine and like shaker. I was like, I don't want to do it. I want, I want you to do it. <laughs> he's so good. Like he would just shake it and be like, I feel like it was whoa, grooving. whoa, Steve, <laughs> <laughs> <He> fell down. <laughs> Next level. So good. 
All right. So you 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 recorded this. Uh, the the experience was magical. Then you came back. How did you get to LA? You drove or you flew? Flew. We flew. We flew. Oh, nice. Yes. <laughs> yes. It would take too long to do it. We were worried about it flying with our guitars. It was uh, scary. Yeah. I know Slipknot, uh, they traveled from Iowa to LA and they drove all together, like nine or how many people? God, isn't there like 15 people. people in that band? That must exactly. It's like, a, it's like a whole football team. I don't know. Like What's the bathroom people? situation on that drive? Uh, it's Slipknot. They don't care. <laughs> Slipknot <laughs> <laughs> and uh, do you know the story? They went to LA, they're recording a song, and then their producer, or no, the labels, and then they came home, and the label people said that the song is too fast. So you need to come back and record a new song and another version. <gasps> so they actually did that and recorded also another song together. But this time the song was too slow. Oh my God. So in the end, on the album, the first album, the song that they're talking about, uh, I forgot the name, but uh, they used the demo version for that album. So the first, yeah, so the version number zero. Yeah, version zero. Wow. That's crazy. I should have just said it's as fast as it needs to be. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, actually, and the, the guy who, the, the, the label guy, he said, like, they, they could have said just like, no, we're not going to do this. Uh, but no, they okay. Let's do this. Okay. <laughs> wow. Arthur, this is random, but you know what I, I'm realizing we should have done before this was uh, that that music video that we recorded. Mm -hmm. We we could have sent that to you. I, I have the link for it because it's it's unreleased. It's to one of our new singles, like one of the songs we did with Steve. Like I could have sent it to you. I screwed I screwed up. I should have done that. I could do it now if you want. I mean, you could watch it and then take out the pause. It's up to you. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll DM yeah. it to you right now just we'll so you have it. it. Yes, yeah, so DM it right now. And I would yeah, just open it, know. and it's going to be a, a live reaction, uh, uh, how it's called, the reaction videos, but we're doing the audio. I don't think you will hear it. Yeah, we should make sure they don't hear it. Right? Yeah, we, we, yeah, we can't have people hearing it. I mean, if you're not going to hear it, then nobody will hear it. So that's, that's it. Here, I'll send it to you. And then there's also a password to view it, and I will type the password as well. Right after it. Oh, intent. By the way, you have uh, 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 on your website. So, yeah, I guess everything that connects to your visuals, how you present yourself in the world, is uh, the work of Des. Yes. Yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. It's the work of Des. Absolutely. Because you have a, a press a page that I can't enter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because you need... We can give you the password to that, too. What is the password for that? Oh, yeah, you, well, yeah, you got it. You got it. it. I know you're not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I just DM'd it to you on Instagram, Arthur. Yeah, yeah, do that because uh, I will probably... Probably you have information, photos there, and a couple of songs. That's what I'm expecting from... Uh, yeah. Well, well, she's sending you the password for the press kit thing, and then I also sent you the link and password for the video. All right, I got the video. Again, I, I don't want to know why I didn't think to send this to you beforehand. It's <laughs> kind of silly. We're doing a live reaction video. Ah, all right. I can see the... Yeah, we'll be commenting, you know? Listening and commenting. I can see the LA feel. <laughs> 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 or I'm talking about visuals. Yeah. The sound. All your regular sticks are there. The ground lifts. <laughs> the ground lifts. There's some funky riffs in this song, for sure. Yeah. It feels like um, not so messy. I don't want to like offend the, the previous stuff, you know? I mean, no offense. Uh, but it's like uh, you can hear everybody. Like everybody has a part and it's not overlapping too much. Yeah. Yeah. Steve Evans. Yeah, Steve Evans, man. In the, especially in the verse, it's just a a, a three part thing. Like there's only one guitar and obviously one bass and drums. But you know, usually we used to like pack on like eighteen guitars into a song. Like, uh huh, yeah, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, but then in the chorus on this song, we we fill it out a little. But did you play it at uh, whiskey? We did. I. Uh, it's a perfect place for that song. <laughs> this is. Our this is our opener now when we play live. This is what we open. How was the response? Good. It was good. good. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty good. I like the <laughs> new style of everybody. Thank you. They had to help me. Ace, Ace and Leah had to help me. Yeah. He, he just wears cargo shorts. I wear cargo shorts too. Yeah. Cargo shorts in the summer, cargo pants in the winter. Yes. 
Just one more minute. Oh, please. When he played the first few bars, I was like, ah, I want to hear it. <laughs> God damn it. Of course, I will mute those. Nobody will hear it. No, you're good. Yeah, yeah. Th- thank you for listening to it right now. No, it's fine. Yeah, but all your like uh, strong points of each uh, musician is there. It's like a perfect song for showcasing. Thanks. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it is. It's a good song, too, because it's like kind of short, but it has a lot in it for that length which is cool and i feel like it's just a good synopsis of like what we sound like if you want to know like what yeah. does brown sound like play him this song and they'll they'll pretty much know um this song happens to be in a in a minor key not all of our songs are in minor keys but like they're generally you know it, like they they have a similar vibe to this you know yeah. arthur's grooving face right now yeah. he's he's grooving these drums nice you look mean nice <laughs> 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 all right it's 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 uh played okay so yeah so what did i say yes so i can hear uh, the change uh, in the sound a little bit just uh as i said like uh all the strong points are there uh but it's now more precise we, we you start to understand why it's so cool let's say like this thank, thank you. you wow so thank you so much man yeah thank you yeah it's all, all together so i can see Uh, yeah, this is like uh, the song, this music video, how you look like, and especially in the end that they show you the the. Fo- I mean, can I a little bit talk about the video? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure, you can talk. About it. Like uh, in the end, they show you just the uh, uh, dolly out, and they show you how you look now. It's like it's this introduction, introduction of you to uh-huh. to to the to the public. You know, mm-hmm. it's like the new ground lift kind of. This is like rebranding yeah. kind of a video. Yeah. Yes, yeah, a little. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, and nobody has seen it, right, in the public. Not yet. No. Not in the public. I mean, we've sent it to a lot of different people that we know, like, within the industry. But it's it's not released. And we, um, yeah, we haven't, like, posted it anywhere. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. You, sh- you shouldn't. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. You have a good, good stuff there. You need to sit in it and be patient. Yeah, it's actually, like, what I learned from other musicians, once you even, like, when you release... No, when you get signed to a label and you release your first EP, uh, the patience is the key because not uh, you're not gonna get success immediately. It's highly unlikely. There needs to be some time, yeah. even sometimes up to two years, so that the momentum keeps going, so that pe- more people discover your music. Mm. Yeah. If it's done correctly, it just goes faster. And if done this really correctly, then maybe there's a chance that it will go viral But realistically, you need just to like be prepared to just to wait a little bit, and that's fine for everybody. Yeah, yeah, that seems like the 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 trend in the in the music industry now. Like, what, what, it, it seems like the overnight success people talk about in the past is extremely uncommon now. It, it just doesn't happen, you know. Yeah. It's so much more complicated. It's not like a, like, unless you like get a viral sound on TikTok or something, and then it's like, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I think that's your best bet. That's your best bet. But actually, we need to talk about social media. Um, uh, well, first of all, I wanted to ask you not about social media, but I don't think you have Bandcamp. Why is that? Bandcamp? I don't know. Maybe we should. Maybe we should. <laughs> I don't know. We'll yeah, make that, an account today. Yeah, Do that, you use really Bandcamp? Hot. I think we had Bandcamp a long time ago, but like didn't, I don't know. It didn't seem like it was very like. I don't think it exists. If you had it, it, it got closed. But I suggest it got closed. Oh. But I suggest that you need to have a band camp because it's you. You have you need to have it anyway at some point. So better just do it now, or maybe or, we'll do it now. Or then. maybe Des doesn't. I I don't know how much Des gets involved in your day to day activities. You know, like the 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 music stuff. Um, no, I mean, he kind of gives us like loose direction, like, you know, you guys need to be doing more of this, more of that, but, um, it's, it's mostly just the three of us who are in charge of our social medias and trying to, you know, trying to make them more popular. You know, like, uh, one year ago I asked Leah, so I said like, okay, so you got signed, I mean, you have a uh, desk now, uh, now you need to find the lawyer. <laughs> yeah. Because you need the, you need the lawyer later anyway. Yeah. And and I think Leah said that Des said yeah that he said the same thing that you need to get the lawyer the entertainment Did? lawyer or anything. Have you found yeah. one already? It's been a year. No, <laughs> we don't have a lawyer yet. No. Wow, well, Des will hook you up with somebody. <laughs> yeah, he'll look us up. We got we got a producer though. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, yeah. You got the producer. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Everything that you, all the people, the, the music video, it's, it's Des context because it was funny, you know, like if you, uh, if you, for example, music video, right? For example, if you go on Instagram, you're like, okay, is Devil, Devil, Devil Driver is here or not? Here. Okay. Context from Des. <laughs> right. Definitely. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or Jeremy Safra, he's also an Oracle management uh, thing. He is, yeah, exactly. That's what, what, that's what the uh, true manager uh, does. It's like he gets you in touch with people that you can't get in touch with normal life, like if you don't have this context. Yeah, yeah. So you don't have Bandcamp, you're going to open it. Social media. All right, Leah, what's up with you? It's like uh, one year ago, I don't think you had like 108,000 followers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just, um, I just one day was just started posting a bunch of like little cover videos, um, on TikTok, and then one of them I did a video of um, "Song for the Dead" by Queens of Stone Age, and then that kind of just like got a lot of views, and then um, that was connected to my Instagram. So then people started like liking my Instagram. So then I just posted, uh, I started posting the the TikToks on Instagram, and then. Um, yeah, eventually it just got to hundred thousand. I don't know. It happened this year, right? It's got fresh. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, and it, year, and yeah. it was like for a long time. I think like two thousand or something you had, and then all of a sudden ten thousand, and then hundred thousand. Yeah, I don't, yeah, <laughs> this is kind of crazy. Yeah, we, we're trying to do that with the band now. <laughs> trying to, um, that's what we need. But, that's uh, what I'm asking. Is like okay, this is. I wanted to ask. All, all right, you have one hundred. 8,000 uh, followers on Instagram. How does it affect the band, you know? Well, we, we post on, like, both the accounts. So, like, a lot of her followers see our posts, which is awesome. We've definitely gotten way more followers than we have before since that. Um, we're just trying to, like, keep keep using it to get more. Um, yeah, like, I, I've been doing a lot of, like, 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 you know how you can, like, collaborate with people? Like, you make, like, my post is also on the ground with Instagram. So then... Um, you know, people see our page and they're like, oh, I think I'm going to follow them too. Yeah. So you're just in trying to like. To get, get her of- audience to the, the, the full band, you know, but, you know, since we haven't released anything in a while and we're kind of sitting on some stuff, it's, it's, it's kind of slow moving. I think once we start putting stuff out there, people will be much more inclined to follow the band as opposed to just her. You know, yeah, yeah, because I'm asking you because again, it's a next step, next though. Like uh, getting 100,000 followers is like uh, unbelievable for most of the musicians. You're like, okay, now what you do with this? You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're definitely like when we, especially when we go to like release stuff, <clears throat> um, we'll definitely use that to be like, make sure you watch like the music video and like share and follow and yeah, follow Ground Lift and, um, no, it's definitely a really good tool to have, to have like people, like that many people that. Do, do you think, uh, uh, it, does it have an effect on you personally and professionally, like all those followers? Do you start to notice that you're changing how you play based on the response of the, of the people? Um, because it, it's, it can be easily addicting, you know, like, oh, like this video didn't get so many views or something like this. And you, you start to change who you are <laughs> no no i still i i only post videos of like songs i really like like i'm i but i do like if people are like can you do can you do this if like if like a bunch of people are like can you please do i don't know do more rush more rush more rush I'm yeah like, i'm like i'm happy people I'm love happy. when we do rush covers i'm happy to do more rush sure yeah you, I, and you're doing a good covers yeah i mean there are some covers on, on online on youtube i checked it out What's the name of the song? The the one, the, the first one. La Via Strangiata. The yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Around eight minutes, ten I, minutes. That was really that was tough. Why? Yeah. We're in the studio for like six hours, just doing take after take after take of that song, trying to get it right. How many takes did you take? Did you make? Do you remember? Probably uh, seven or eight of them. Well, I think, yeah, right? like I, we recorded that at Berkeley, and when you get a studio at Berkeley, you have like a total of four hours. Yeah. So we had to set everything up. Like, make sure all the levels were good. And it was in, like, the middle of the night, too. Yeah, it was, like, I think it was, like... You can't say because there's no windows. Exactly, exactly. Just lose all sense of time. But, yeah, I think we ended up being able to do, like, five or six takes, probably. Really? Okay, yeah. Because it because it's, it's such a long song that um that that ended up taking, like, an hour. And then you, you, you basically have, like, an hour to record once you, like, set up and then you have to break yeah. everything down. So... 
but we practiced that a lot. We played, we, we played that a lot. We played that at one of our, la- like the last show we played before COVID, we actually played La Via Strangiata live. Like <clears throat> we were playing in like this, this small, uh, venue in, uh, in New England. And, um, I can't remember somebody like requested Rush because we, we play all originals, but then sometimes we'll play like a Rush cover just cause we love Rush and it's, it's good music for a trio to play, you know? Um, so somebody requested Rush, and we were like, "All right, we're doing, we're gonna do La Via Strangiata, like, because that was the one that we knew at the time, <laughs> you know." Yeah, I can't believe we did that. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Now we do YYZ at all of our shows. Well, this will go into the vault. You will make the whole album of Rush covers. We should exactly, exactly. Like Dream, I think Theater Dream Theater, Theater right? did something like that, right? The yes, yeah. they did. They did. Yeah, we should do that. We should get on that today. <laughs> yeah, screw our screw our song. Let's do let's do Rush. Yeah. We're doing a lot of Beatles covers, actually. Beatles covers? Which album? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All of them. Any. Yeah, any, any of them. We did uh, I Feel Fine recently and Paperback Writer. Yeah, I Feel Fine got like 80,000 views on TikTok. Like, so we're, we're just, now nah, let's do more Beatles things. People like when we do Beatles, you know? Oh, you see, you started to get into, you get addicted to the TikTok thing. You're like, oh. <laughs> like <more. laughs> well, I mean, no, do it because like, that's what people in the music industry care about. They care. People at record labels, pe- agents, they don't care about... The, all they care about is how many followers you have. That's yes. the only thing they care about. Yes, so, unfortunately, it is like that. Yeah, so you got to do whatever it takes, you know? But also, stay true to yourself. I mean, so we all love the Beatles, so it's easy oh, for yeah. us to just do Beatles covers and have fun with it, you know? Yeah, yeah it's not like an unpleasant thing to do. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun because it's such a great song. Yeah. Uh, Ace, uh, like, uh, you're writing the lyrics, right? Most of the time. I mean, they, they've they definitely written some, but usually. How close do you get to your personal feelings, you know? Is it something that you, like, put yourself, like, into the lyrics, like, it's, like, real-life stories, or you make them up because they sound good, or...? Yeah, I do. I think it, it is some of my real-life stories. I don't know. I pick, like, little, like, little, like, interactions I have and, like, make them into a song or, like, little, like, you know... I don't know, like emotional interactions I have with people, like sometimes become a song or like just an idea I have. I don't know. It's like, it's very varied what the lyrics are about, but very, very I'm not afraid to put my, uh, you know, personal spin on them or whatever. Yeah. I made a yeah, music honestly. video for a band called The Loom of Time, and they released uh, uh, the music video recently, finally. And the thing is, is that the, the the guy who composed the songs, he met, he said, like, I don't care about the lyrics. I just put the lyrics there so that people need something to read, but they don't 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 matter. And actually, if you go on YouTube, it's like all the credits, and there's like a line. Lyrics are not that important. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. Actually, you need to check it out because I think they're like really uh, m- musically is completely different. He said that n- there's no parts that are repeating. Wow. Wow. And the whole album was recorded in a sequence. So, I mean, one after another, not. What's the name of the group? Say uh, again. The the loom of time. I will send you on DM after the. I found it. The loom of time. Awesome. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Check it out. I mean, it's metal, but still, you know, musically, it's uh, something like that. Yeah, we like metal. <clears throat> We're metal people. Uh, you don't look like metal people. You look like a band from 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 the nice families. <laughs> yeah. This this hair doesn't. This is good metal hair, man. Come on. <laughs> for the. For... For the listeners who can't see the video, oh, yeah. Mike That's has long true. hair. <laughs> yeah, I, I have long hair. Sorry, people. Yeah, <laughs> you'll see. They'll see it on our Instagram. I have long hair. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, uh, everybody should follow you on Instagram and TikTok. You're one of the few bands who actually use TikTok and actually quite successful at TikTok. Not many people are are are, are even close to you. I mean, we're. We're trying to be. Yeah, we're, we're trying to be successful. We're trying to, we're on a schedule now of we're putting out at least one band TikTok a week, but a lot of times we end up doing more. Um, but I mean, a lot of resources go into making just like a 50 second video. It's a lot, yeah. you know? It takes a long time. I don't know how you, you find time for music. <laughs> actually, nobody knows these days how a musician should actually be a musician with all the social media and it takes so much time yeah it's like you have to make because there's just so much content people are like where is i want more but it's like 
that it's just and it's hard because youtube has to be like horizontal you know like it's like a normal but now all that social media is vertical so if you record a video it's like okay now i can't put that on YouTube. you got to do two versions you got to do horizontal and vertical it's really dumb well the music video that i just sold the new one it's fine for vertical i think it was also like the idea also behind that how it's cut you could yeah, do a lot of it vertically true. you could yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. and i noticed also like in the music videos a lot of videos think about TikTok and vertical just how the how the how the musicians are positioned in the frame usually it's like center so it's easy for the for the future to to cut it yeah no that's that's all right so what what's your plan okay you recorded ep you recorded music video at la um so what's the plan for this year so we have a couple of months till the end of this year what, what's your plan for the time being where um <clears throat> we're not releasing the video just yet um, we, we were thinking about doing it, but we're kind of just in talks with various, you know, A&R people and uh, different people associated with labels um, to just see if we can, you know, make a mutually beneficial deal with where we're at. Uh, and then if we end up deciding not to go the label right, route right now, then we'll just self-release and we'll we'll start doing it that way. And then, you know, a few months down the road, start thinking about labels again, perhaps, you know, it's, it's, it's honestly kind of up in the air right now. We're just kind of trying like a few different things simultaneously. <clears throat> yeah. You're probably most probably you, in any case, even if you get signed now or you don't find anybody, you will have, you will release your music around uh, February at least. Yeah. I mean, that would be great. Yeah. I, I, I think you're probably right about that. Because even if you find a label, it takes the time to find a lawyer that you don't have yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to neg negotiate on the deal because there will be negotiation because Des is there and he knows the business, how tricky it is. So it won't be, it will be not fast, probably a month. So nothing is fast and you're not going to release the album right before Christmas because it's not a Christmas album. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Very true. This is not. We'll start writing. On Christmas, so. And January is a dead time in in the music industry anyway. February also, so sometime around March. We've heard that that January is a dead time. So you're you're confirming this. Yes. Nice. Oh my. <laughs> All my yeah. knowledge about the industry that, you know, because I could feel it also because there are no um, commissions coming from musicians uh, before January, like the whole this November, December, January, and February, there's nothing usually. Yeah, it seems like that. It's very strange. It's like a, it's, it's a total lull in the, in the industry. It's weird. It has to do also, uh, I mean, it, it has to do also with the financial year of the labels, how much money they can spend at the end of the year yeah, and how much money they can, and also with the, all the gigs that you can get the money from. Plus, the, I mean, it's just naturally it's that time, yeah. but I'm pretty sure your music will come out on Friday at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be a Friday. It'll be a Friday. It will be a Friday. Yeah. yeah. But even though we're not releasing any like actual music right now, we're we're very busy with with creating things and putting stuff out there. Like we're we're super active on TikTok, we're super ac active on Instagram. We're always releasing little jams and clips like that and we're booking a lot of shows, you know? Like we just played in California last month, we played in Rhode Island and now we're we're setting up a couple of shows around New England uh, for this fall. And then also, you know, if there's other venue, I mean, we're, we're open to going anywhere to play. We literally like fly to Austria and play if, if it, if it made sense, you know, so we're doing a lot of shows. If you, if you, if you're planning that, I can hook you up with bookers on this podcast. Everything is possible. It's not a problem. <laughs> that would be great. Hell yeah. 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 We'll I, know, I know bookers who would be interested. That's what yeah. we like to hear, Arthur. <laughs> we, we'll, definitely, we'll talk about that, man. Uh, right. Uh, by the way, like whiskey go, go, how was it? Like, uh, did I think I didn't ask you? How was it? It it went really well, except except. I mean, oh, <laughs> give me the except. Except there's an except. <laughs> no, it was supposed to. Originally, it was just going to be us and one other band, so that was um going to be really easy. But then it ended up being like they added a few more. They added like seven more bands. So what? You know, no, not in one evening. Yes. In one in evening. One, <laughs> yes. So that that meant we all had to like use backline. Somebody got really greedy. Yeah. I know. So that we had, we all had to use backline. I had to use a, uh, like a drum set that everyone else was using and we didn't have a sound check, but I mean, we did, you know, we played the songs. It was, it was good, mm -hmm. but 
yeah, we felt like they just wanted us to like, just, okay, okay, start, play. Like, because, you know, they were in a rush, basically, because they had so many. It was bands. a long night. Oh, and you played Rush songs. We did. We did. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just, it's just a tough stage to play on. I mean, that, that, that's what it was. Like, it's, it's kind of hard to hear up there. It's one of those situations, you know, you, you said you're not a musician, but I'm sure you're aware that like on stage is very different to how it sounds off stage. Super different. Like, it's not even the same thing at all. Yeah, and, and I could uh, see, I mean, there are some recordings from uh, Whiskey, and I could see that the stage is above people, uh, and the sound that you're getting is going somewhere not on stage. I yeah. Think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like I could, when we were playing the Whiskey, like the only thing I could hear was my bass. Like I could not hear Ace, and I could like, Leah's drums just sounded like really weird to me. Yeah, it sounded weird. So I just kind of had to get through the songs, like not quite knowing where I, you know what I mean? But it, it, it went well, because we rehearsed so much that like, I can't like we could still do the songs without hearing, mm -hmm. you know, because we're just so like locked in. So in the end, it worked out because it's yeah. your re real first time uh, LA experience, like playing, like uh, you, you you're getting through the fire yeah. <laughs> of the show business, yeah. <laughs> getting to know it a little bit step by step. W what are your expectations at this point? Or are you just like trying to keep it cool? and not not to go completely mad about i mean everything that like so going on going on for you is like a huge uh i mean chance kind of you know you're good musicians right but the, the chance of actually like getting on 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 uh, like signed um working with oracle management des and all this stuff you know like this is like happens not often yeah, it's a really, really good opportunity. We're 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 lucky, but we're also like really eager, you know. Yeah, yeah. You look like that, and that's what people like, you know. Like, uh, like uh, I could totally see when I w the first time I talked to you just before we, I sent to you the message, I could see that you're eager. I could see that the music is there, and you're actually ready to do the work because it's really important. Yeah. Yeah, but as far as expectations, I mean, we just. We, we want this band to be the only thing that we do. Cause you know, all three of us right now, we do a lot of different things, obviously as, as musicians. Um, but we want this band to be the only thing that we, that we really like have to do. Um, we want it to be our, our full-time job, you know, our like musical legacy, all that stuff. You know what I mean? Um, so we just got to figure out how to get it there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you have a, you have a nice start and keep the momentum going. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, everybody with whom I talked, they said like you should you should focus on one band. Otherwise, it's you just physically you don't have enough time for other stuff. No, mm -hmm. yeah, it will become once you are signed, <laughs> and I think it will happen in your case. Once you're signed, oh, you need to work harder than before. <laughs> <laughs> so you won't have a time for anything else. But I know that you're ready for that anyway. Yeah. So you said a lot of musicians, uh, a lot of like younger musicians listen to this maybe for uh like just to kind of hear oh, what is round with doing you know maybe we should start doing that right yeah so the idea you mean like uh, with the interviews of this kind right yeah yeah the idea is that we should like i ask pretty much questions are pretty much the same it's around the music and how you got there and the idea is that oh so it's it's for people to understand what to expect basically just sharing the knowledge about everything plus contact of oh, they know you now i know you now yeah so this is like a place where the magic happens for example i like to give the example when i interviewed a band they said okay we need uh, a booker a promoter in austria i'm like okay i will try and i found a guy i mean i just contacted them and then they came to, from united kingdom to austria and now we're we're talking awesome. about we're going to be talking to you about bookers now in in, in Austria. <laughs> yeah, well, it will be fine. I mean, yeah, I know. Just just connecting people, and that's it. Yeah, it's great. Well, as far as young musicians, the I'll, if if there's more listening now that we're 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 towards the end of this, uh, all like all the stuff we're doing, it takes a lot of time. Like doing social media, you know, flying to LA, making an EP, writing songs, and you know, playing shows and hooking up all this stuff. It takes a lot of time, but none of it matters if you don't practice and a lot of people i feel like they don't they don't like we we all it's super important to the three of us that we all have enough time to like practice our instruments and play and make sure we have it are you know what together you know <laughs> how how often are you practicing per week as a band oh oh, oh i didn't band. even mean as a band i meant individually 
All right. Just individually and as a band. We need to give an example. As a band, we meet up like usually like once a week to rehearse for shows and stuff. Well, if we have like a big show coming up, it'll be more like sometimes we'll do like two, three times a week, like in the, you know, in the evenings after work, like we'll all get together for a few hours, Yeah, you know, and practicing practice. individually every day. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah we every all try to practice hours. every day for a while. Definitely. Yeah. But you can even see, I think you record it on, on social media that you're practicing or something. I mean, it's like, you're like crazy with, with the music and stuff you're like really into it it's it's, it's <laughs> self-explanatory you. it's it's you are more about that's the thing you're more about the music uh but you needed help with the direction and the visuals and that's what you get now yeah so but there are so many bands that want to have the uh, the the fame the glory or the visuals you know but nobody wants to do the work yeah yeah in the end it's all about music like we do all this extra stuff so we can do the music exactly yeah all right guys uh i don't want to bother you too much uh so the last thing is i ask uh, give me a ground lift song till you run out of time
Thank you, Groundlift, and thank you, dear listener, for staying till the end. Don't forget to follow this show on Spotify. And if you like what you're hearing, rate it show on Spotify, Apple, or any other podcast platform that you prefer. Write a review, I love, and I hate reviews. All right, until next time. Bye.